Hi there guys, it's Nick Wood from Unshaken Photography Training. Hope you're well. Um, welcome to this very short introductory video where I'm going to introduce you to Adobe Lightroom, which I strongly recommend as the tool of choice if you're uh, starting out in terms of editing your pictures. It's also a great tool for uh, cataloging your images. It works as a database as well as an editing tool. This is a really brief introduction to the tool. I'm going to start off just by showing you where you can get it from in case you don't know that. At the moment, Adobe has a great um, introductory uh, package going on. In fact, I think it's their core package now. Their photographer's package where you get the full Photoshop tool as well as Lightroom. And I think it's somewhere in the region of uh, £8.57 a month. Um, after that, we're going to open the tool up. I'll just very quickly show you where some of the key features are. You may have seen it before, you may not have. If you've been on one of our beginner's photography courses, then you certainly would have been introduced to it. And it's just a very quick refresher to show you uh, where you can find some of the tools that uh, you're looking for to get you up and going. Um, for what it's worth, I'm actually uh, working my way around here. You should be able to see the mouse on the screen. I'm using a graphics tablet. So you may see the mouse disappearing and then coming back. So if you're not used to that, it's just what happens with a graphics tablet as opposed to a mouse but uh, hopefully that won't cause you any problems let's make a quick start let's just have a quick look at uh, where you can get the tool from if you're not used to that a uh, quick search here on adobe lightroom photographers uh, tool package let's have a look let's try package see what comes up there you go they call it the creative cloud photography plan if i just click on that this should hopefully take us through to the right place. Here you go. Get all your photography essentials, including Lightroom and Photoshop, for just £8.57 a month, including VAT. Buy now. So um, if you haven't got it, that's where you can get it from. I think you can get a free trial. I haven't uh, been to this page for a little while, so let's just have a quick look and see uh, what that's telling you. But you may be able to download it and get a free trial. Yeah, it looks like you can do all of that as well. So There you go. That's how you can get hold of it. Hopefully that wasn't too quick for you. I just went into Google and typed in Adobe Photography Plan and uh, up it came. Okay, let's get rid of that. Let me just show you the tool. Now, the version I am using here today is uh, the latest version. This is uh, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, the CC package, uh, part of the Creative Cloud there has been a very brief, not brief, a very recent update, which has had a couple of major overhauls. So uh, even I might get a bit uh, stuck here, but we'll uh, work through together. There it is. You're looking at Lightroom. Lightroom is a stunning tool. As I said, it's got a whole series of different um, tools here. It shows you at the top corner here in the top right hand corner. Hopefully you can see the mouse moving backwards and forwards. Top right hand corner here is a whole series of modules that you can use. Most of the guys that I know, certainly those that are starting out, tend to use these two, the library and the develop module. The library is what works as a database um, and how you can move and manipulate your images all around. In the develop module, this is where we can start making some actual changes to our images, some manipulation to them. Um, in fact, we don't actually manipulate the images. We're looking at what Lightroom calls virtual copies. So you're never actually uh, editing your original pictures here. But uh, yeah, we're going to look at the library and the develop very quickly. Um, with Lightroom, you do get these four outer panels. There's one here at the top. There's one here at the side. There is one here at the bottom that we can access down here that has this film strip to it. And then you have this left-hand side window as well. Now, very often when you see people working with Lightroom, you'll see them quite frequently opening and closing. I'm just going to tap onto some of these side arrows and you'll see that it can make my screen bigger and smaller. So if you see me doing that, jumping around, I do apologize, but uh, I'm trying to make the central window bigger or less cluttered. That's why I might be doing that, but I'll try and keep that to a minimum. I've got a nice big screen here that I'm working on. Okay, moving on, the library. This is where we can, manip we can manipulate where our images are held, are stored and all of that good stuff. It's from here that you're likely to start out. The first task that we tend to do is to import our images. So I've gone right to the top left hand corner here to this menu and I'm going to go to file, 
and then to import photos and video. Hopefully you can see that, import photos and video. This will be your starting point. You need to bring your pictures into Lightroom, into the database. It's at this phase when I start importing that Lightroom starts creating these, creating these virtual copies. Now, this may be a shock for some of you. This is the new import window. It certainly caused a bit of an issue for uh, many photographers. We're not used to seeing this. Uh, the older window is more popular. I'm going to try and hopefully uh, show you what the older window looked like right now, just so you can compare them. Here it comes. Okay, you can see that's quite different. That's the older window. Now, I have been led to believe that they're going to be returning back very quickly to that older style window. Whether or not that's true, I'm not sure, but uh, it certainly caught me off guard. I think this is uh, an unusual looking window, this new one that we're going back to now. This only looks more like a Microsoft based window to me, um, this new version. I'm not sure if I like it more or less, but uh, let's see. Let's say I was going to browse and bring in some pictures from a card. Here's a card here. These are the pictures that are held onto a memory card that's currently plugged into the side of the computer. Here's the images that are on the card that you can look at here. I get the choice to import the pictures. I can select them all if I want to bring them all in. If I wanted to select some of them, I would tick this and then I can come along and tick the images that I might be looking to import. These are rather bizarre looking uh, collection of images that are on there, but never mind, not so worried about that. So I could select them all. I'll just come back and select individual images if that is what I would prefer to do. So there's a few images. To the right hand side of the screen, I've got some more options. I can embed some keywords at this moment if I wanted to put in some keywords that I might be sorting through in the future. So I could put in, for example, training, unshaken, if I wanted to use that as a term as well. Any other keywords, separate those with a, a, a comma and I can include those. I get some other options here because I may want to work with my images in different ways. I may want to copy them. I may want to move them from the card. Um, I may just want to add them to the database. Now on the new version, I seem to have severely restricted these options to you, what you've got available. Um, but certainly without a doubt, these images when you import are gonna be creating these virtual copies in their Lightroom database. And that's what you're gonna be working on. So let's just go ahead. Let's just import those four pictures. This is what you'd see at the top corner here, top left-hand corner. The pictures are now being imported into the Lightroom database and copies will be being made onto the hard drive, the hard drive of my computer. So here we go, what's happened here? The images here have now been imported. These are the virtual copies we're looking at here that I'm moving backwards and forward over now. You get a copy of the film strip at the bottom as well. I can look at the images here. There's a little menu here with a few options. If this little window is not present on your computer at the moment, you may have to come to the top here and select from view, you may want to show the toolbar. I think it's the toolbar, that one at the bottom. Absolutely right. View, show toolbar. Here I can now choose if I want to look at the images in a little grid view or if I want to look at them individually. I can also look at one image against another. They're actually different images. If I come through, you'll start seeing that I can be looking at more than one image at a time. I tend to look at mine individually and here we go. That's what I've done there. I've just selected to this icon here. Okay, to the right hand side at the moment, I'm seeing here the histograms, all of the detail on my file. So very important. You can always see the shutter speed that the image was shot at. I can also see the aperture and also some details on the focal length as well as my ISO. So plenty of information straight to hand. Now I do have some basic editing options here if I want to, but I wouldn't get confused with any of this at the moment. What we're really seeing here is the histogram. I think it's nice to see. Also, I can see if I've got any keywords embedded into it. At this phase, I can choose which images I may want to go through and start editing. But let's just say I wanted to start editing them all. I would come straight up here now to do any editing in the develop module. Now, I'm suddenly finding with the newer version of Lightroom, the latest update, that it does seem to pause and get held up a little bit, which is rather... Uh, Worrying, there seems to be the odd pauses coming 
um, all over the place, if I'm being totally honest with you. So I'm not entirely convinced the latest version has been a great update. I think there'll be some new bug fixes coming out very soon. OK, when I'm in the develop module, you can now see down this right hand side, I've now got all of the editing tools that I may want to see. And I can scroll up and down here. There's a little panel that I've clicked and I'm dragging up and down for doing my editing. For anyone that's been on our beginners course, we really just started off by using some of these basic tools here in this basic option. Now, a lot of your tools may not be open. There's little drop down menus here. I'm just going to tick on this little arrow here. And you can see I could keep going through just to really close down an awful lot of these tools if I didn't want them open. Or vice versa, if they're not open for you at the moment and you're rather confused and thinking, goodness, nothing's there, then again, just come over to this right hand side and just suddenly drop down some of these tools. So again, I've got this histogram just showing me all of the key shooting information below it. And I've also got here my basic tools open here for me to do some editing. At the bottom, I've still got this window open here that's showing me the uh, film strip, showing me all of the images. Now, what's important is we're looking here at the last import only. This isn't all the pictures in the database. These are just the last set of images that were imported. If I want to see more images, then I'm going to come back to the library. And in this section here, I can then start choosing which images exactly I want to be looking at. Let's just scroll to the top here. And here she's showing me the catalogue. Your images have been imported into the catalogue. That's the collection of pictures altogether. That's the database, if you like. And if I wanted to look at all of the photographs within this catalogue, or certainly all of the virtual copies, let's say, I would click here. And now I can see all of the uh, images that make up the uh, catalogue here, the virtual copy of images here. If I want to just look at the previous import, those images that we have been looking at, then I would come back here. But I had to come from the develop module back into the library if I wanted to start uh, moving between all of the options. Let's just go back to the develop module. Now, one other option that I like to have open is to this side, to the left hand side, is the navigator option. So I can see the image, and this gives me the choice of whether or not I'm fitting the picture that I'm looking at to the opening size of the window. Or I could come to field to zoom in a bit more. If I want to go to full scale, then I can come in even further. I can also choose additional options here in terms of scales that I'm viewing the images at. So up to 11 times large if I want to see pixel by pixel. But pretty much most time I'm hitting the fit option. And this is where you'll often see photographers then opening and closing these panels. Because as I open and close these side panels, it makes the central image, the image that I'm looking at, bigger or smaller, easier for me to work with. The key editing tools that we recommend for most people when you're just starting out, if you don't know where you're going, are over here to the right hand side. And we're looking at this tool here, this marching ants tool. This is the crop tool. I click on that. And now I can drag these side panels up and down, left to right, the top panels, the side panels, all of this good stuff. I can start rotating the image if I want to do that just by clicking and dragging. I hit the enter button now. And that's then taken care of that uh, uh, crop. The crop hasn't happened. Unlike Photoshop, Lightroom works by showing you what your images would look like if you applied the changes. But if I click back on the marching ants just here on the right hand side, you can see the, that change hasn't happened yet. It is only when I'm ready to finish the whole editing process and I select the images. Let me open this bottom window back up. If I now select all of these bottom pictures, which I'm doing by clicking on the first one, holding down the shift button, and now selecting the last image. At this point now, if I've finished editing those pictures, I would return to the top menu here, go to File, and then Export. And that is when full-size images would be created with the changes applied. At no point are my original images, though, which have been saved to my hard drive, going to be edited, which I think is a lovely feature to have. OK, let's just get rid of that. I'm just going to tap next to the image. Come back to the editing tools. In case uh, you want a couple of pointers, I would recommend when you're starting off, have a look at your crop and straightening. An awful lot of us actually take pictures a little bit wonky. So you can just come into here and just straighten up your picture just by uh, dragging the picture around a bit. 
You can sort out your exposure here. You've got an exposure tool that you can use to brighten up or darken down your image. Now, we can also play around with more specific areas. The, the brightest part of any picture we call the highlights or the darkest part, the shadows. I can play around with those more independently just to bring out detail as I might see fit. So play around with that exposure options you've got available to you here. And then move down to this presence option and play around with your colors. I would always recommend for guys who are completely new that just be a little bit careful with saturation. I find some of your colors can tend to go a bit nuclear. Let's use that as a term on you. I tend to prefer with most of the editing that I do, and it's a, it's a taste thing, just to slightly desaturate the pictures and then use the vibrance tool. The vibrance tool I really like, this will look for slightly more muted colors and boost them. And it does a great job of ignoring skin tones as well. So none of your people end up with too much of a uh, an orange glow about them. And finally, a little bit of contrast, making your pictures, giving them a bit more of a three-dimensional uh, element. If you boost contrast a little bit, which is making the darker elements a bit darker and the lighter elements a bit lighter, that can give them a bit of punch. At any point in time, another great feature of Lightroom is that you can come down here. I don't know if you can see any more towards the uh, bottom left-hand corner. I've got this before and after option where I can uh, have a look. And if I keep clicking on that, I can then see a comparison of what I started with compared to what I've ended up with. And that can work great. So quick summary, the four basic editing tools that we've used here, the crop and straighten, the exposure window here, the presence window here, and also this contrast slider. And they're all can be found in the basic option here, basic menu here, and the histogram section here. Oh, sorry, I clicked on the top menu. Histogram section where you find the marching ends. There's lots of other great tools, and again, you've got plenty of time in your life to explore them and to have a play around with those. Okay, let's say I've now edited these pictures and now I wanted to uh, produce full-size finished ones. I would select all of the images, come to the top, up here to this top menu, and then hit File and Export. When I come in here, I've now got the options where I can choose where am I going to export the images to. This is a bit like a save as option, if you like, when we're exporting. I'm now creating a new full-size image. So where do I want to send them to or create them to? In this case, the hard drive. And I get to choose here some options here. And I can come and pick wherever I want to store my final images. I get to choose if I want to rename them. I can also come along and then decide if uh, I want to play around with the size of the files, the quality of the files, and so forth. So plenty of elements there for you to play around with. Um, let me just cancel that down. Just about to finish for you and say that's the end of this uh, video. Going to be producing uh, plenty more of these videos over the next few days and uh, weeks, so please keep returning back to www.unshaken.co.uk. And if you'd like to come on one of our photography courses, then uh, please get in touch with us at your leisure. Many thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.